Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Child Anxiety Fact Podcast. My name is Dawn Friedman, and I'm the owner of Child Anxiety Support, a membership for parents of anxious kids. I have my master's in clinical counseling and additional postgraduate training in child anxiety disorders, including exposure and response prevention and the Supportive Parenting for Anxious Childhood Emotions Program, or SPACE program, which was designed by Dr. Ellie Levowitz of the Yale Child Study Center. I'm also certified in infant toddler mental health. FAC stands for Frequently Asked Questions, and each week I'll be answering your questions about childhood and teen anxiety. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. This week's question for the Child Anxiety FAC is, what's the most important thing parents of anxious kids need to know? I really liked this question. I appreciated the person who asked this. They are the parent of a child who is now grown and they struggled with anxiety. This was a discussion we had together reflecting back on their parenting their anxious child and talking about things I've shared in my newsletter. Uh, They're a subscriber and something that I wrote made them think about it. And this was a discussion we have. So it's not actually a question that somebody asked me. It's a question that they wanted me to cover on the show because it's something that they wished they'd known then. Okay, so the question again is, what's the most important thing parents of anxious kids need to know? And this person and I both agree that the most important thing for you to know is that your child can overcome their anxiety. That's it. When you're in the middle of parenting an anxious child, it can feel overwhelming, especially if your child has big struggles, especially if your family has become very trapped by your child's anxiety. It can feel terrible as a parent. You worry that you're failing your kid. You worry that you're never gonna figure out. It's exhausting. And it's important to know that they can overcome their anxiety. You can help them overcome their anxiety and that we're all growing together. Parenting is a chance to grow ourselves. We are growing our children and we are growing through the experience of raising those children. Growing is hard. We only grow when we run up against things that we don't know and then we have to struggle our way through it. Our kids are doing that and we are doing that. And most especially when it comes to raising anxious kids, those experiences really mirror each other. A lot of what we do in the Child Anxiety Support Program is reflect on how anxiety is impacting us as parents so that we can bring the wisdom and insight that we gain in considering that to our children. The most obvious way that our anxiety impacts our children is that we're anxious about our child's anxiety. We're anxious for them. And so we need to address our own anxiety in order to help them address their anxiety. This answer that your child can overcome their anxiety is something we need to believe in so that we can let go of some of our anxiety. Yes, things can and will get better. Yes, indeed. Especially the more we learn about anxiety, the more we learn about how anxiety patterns show up in our family, and the more we learn how to interrupt them. It's heavy work but it's good work, it's valuable work, and we will all of it come out of it as better people. In light of this, because I was thinking about this a lot, I created a Bill of Rights for Anxious Kids. And this is based on and inspired by Ross Green's Bill of Rights for Behaviorally Challenged Kids. And I'll link that in the show notes. Make sure if you wanna check that out, that you go to the show notes. You may recognize Ross Green's name as the author of The Explosive Child. I'm gonna run through my Bill of Rights for Anxious Kids and talk about it a little bit on here. And at the end of the podcast, I'll make sure that you know how you can download your own copy if you'd like to have it to stick on your fridge or to share with someone else. All right, you ready? Let's go. Anxious kids have the right to be recognized as capable people having a hard time. That is to say, Our anxious children have many strengths and gifts, and we're gonna remember that. 
They are more than the sum of their anxiety. Sometimes the anxiety may feel so overwhelming for them and for us, we may forget that. So we're going to make a point of looking to see when they act on their capability. Heck, if they make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on their own, we're going to be excited about it because we're going to remember they are capable people. Anxious kids have the right to be encouraged to face their fears by people who are patient, flexible, and supportive. That means that we, their parents, need to be patient, flexible, and supportive. And it's okay for us to have a hard time of that. That's when we need to lean on our own supports. But we need to come to our children with some measure of patience, flexibility, and support. Anxious kids have the right to adults that recognize that managing anxiety requires skills that kids are still learning. And not just kids, we're all still learning anxiety skills. I am constantly amazed at how often I'm running up against something and realize when I talk it out with a friend or a colleague that it's a skill that I teach people in the context of child anxiety and I need to be reminded of it myself. Life requires us to learn new skills and relearn old skills in new context. So we're recognizing our kids are learning skills. They haven't learned them yet. They are in the process of learning. Anxious kids have the right to adults who are committed to accessing, modeling, and sharing those skills. It's just what I was saying before. We're learning too. When we know we don't know, that gives us permission to do our own work, do our own learning, and doing our own practicing. It's ongoing. And listen, I know you're tired and overwhelmed, but that's okay because learning these skills will benefit you in lots of ways and you can take it one little bite at a time. You don't have to be perfect out of the gate and neither does your child. Anxious kids have the right to be afforded the room, time, and information that they need to practice those skills. In order to practice those skills, they're going to need opportunities, which means we are going to have to set them up to face their fears sometimes. And when I say set them up, I mean have a plan. We're not just going to throw them to the wolves. We're going to create a plan that helps them learn those skills in the context of facing their anxiety. Anxious kids have the right to make mistakes, learn from failures, and still be seen as strong and brave people. Listen, we are all going to make mistakes. It's part of being human and failure is part of being human too. Trying is brave. Trying is brave whether or not the trying works. When our children make even a little little tiny inch towards facing their fears, we need to recognize what strength and bravery that takes because it's scary. Facing anxiety is scary. But we've got brave kids, remember? We know that they're competent. Anxious kids have the right to adults who understand that at their most anxious, kids may struggle and who recognize that this is part of growing and not a sign of failure. In other words, when your child melts down, when they're facing their anxiety, we're not gonna see this as a dead end. We're going to see this as part of the process of getting down that road. Maybe they got a pull to the side now and then. Maybe it's going to be frustrating for us and it's sure going to be frustrating for them, but it's part of the process. It's not the end of the process. The end of the process is when they've done the thing. Anxious kids have the right to have access to their own help, whether that be therapy, workbooks, activities, or other resources to continue their skill building and practice if they desire it. That means that kids need access to those supports. They're not always going to take advantage of it. But if your child says no way to counseling at eight, that doesn't mean they're gonna say no way to counseling at 10. The child who says, I am not interested in that workbook may still be open to learning those skills in another way. As we create access to ourselves to learn these things, we can be looking for ways to give our children access to. For example, if your child doesn't want to look at the workbook, how about you look at the workbook? And then you don't have to say to them, hey, I learned this thing in the workbook because that might put up their barriers right away. They don't want to learn, remember? They told you that. Instead, you can start adding that skill to your own repertoire. And by modeling it, you're giving them 
opportunity and access to it. Anxious kids have the right to adults who understand that facing and managing anxiety is a lifelong endeavor and will require ongoing effort and learning. That's what I was saying earlier about myself. I was an anxious kid. I still have anxiety now as an adult. I'm still learning things. It's part of having an anxious temperament. If we have brains that are shaped to get a little more anxious, well, we're going to get a little more anxious. But those skills mean the anxiety will not control us all the time. We'll just need to relearn them and revisit them when life gives us challenges. Anxious kids have the right to adults who will advocate for them and who will also teach them and support them to be their own advocates. So yes, you will go to the teacher and you will go to the school and you will talk to the pediatrician and you will talk to your in-laws and you will advocate for your child and you will let people know, hey, they're having a hard time and this is how you can help. But we are going to try to put ourselves out of a job. One of the things we're going to do is teach our children how to start advocating for themselves. Now for anxious kids, this can be part of their anxiety. They might not be good at this but we're going to continue to teach them. We're gonna work on those skills. And again, we're gonna give them that opportunity. Anxious kids have the right to be gently challenged and encouraged to grow through their anxiety, even when it's inconvenient or upsetting for the adults who care for them. Yeah, this one is tough too. And I'm not saying that you constantly have to be doing all the hard things all at once, but If you have an anxious child, that means that sometimes when you have decided to really dial in and deal with the anxiety, things are going to be a little bit off the rails. If your child has a hard time, for example, getting to school in the morning and you decide, you know, this is it, we are going to deal with this, we're going to get you out the door to school, you can expect things to get more challenging in the mornings, but then they're going to get better. So basically things will get worse and then they'll get good. Sometimes our life is going to have to be inconvenient, more inconvenient than it is right now, in order for it to get even better. Anxious kids have the right to adults who are willing and able to recognize and address their own anxiety so that kids have room to grow beyond it. That's what we were talking about at the beginning of this, right? We need to deal with our anxiety first and foremost in order to help our children deal with their anxiety. We have to deal with our anxiety about their anxiety. That's what this whole podcast episode is about. Anxious kids have the right to grow out of their anxious label and to understand that their anxiety is only one aspect of their valuable selves. And isn't that so important for all of us? Our children are full, varied, fascinating people. They aren't just anxious people. They have so many things to share with the world and dealing with their anxiety is going to let them do that. The world needs them. The world needs their unique gifts and offerings. I hope this episode was helpful and maybe even inspiring. If you would like to download the Bill of Rights for Anxious Kids, you can do that at my website at childanxietysupport.com forward slash rights. That's R-I-G-H-T-S. And share it with someone, maybe their teacher, maybe the grandparents, maybe the babysitter, maybe your co-parent. And let me know what you think. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you have a question you would like me to answer on the show, please go to childanxietysupport.com forward slash F-A-Q. And if you'd like to learn more about the Child Anxiety Support membership, please go to childanxietysupport.com. The membership offers courses, live events, and community to help you design a personalized program to free your family from the trap of child anxiety. I hope you'll consider subscribing to the podcast and sharing it with any friends or family who you think might find it helpful. You can get more of my child anxiety content over at Instagram, where I'm Dawn Friedman, MSED, or on Facebook at the Child Anxiety Support page. Thanks again, and have a great week.